Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Valley Growth Lab webinar. We are so excited to have you all and to have our master of ceremonies, <laughs> Angelou Masters. Um, before we get started, I did want to just quickly introduce myself and bring up a, a few announcements today. Um, so this, this program today is brought to you by the Valley Economic Alliance, which I'm sure most of you are familiar, but if not, the Valley Economic does, Alliance does fantastic things for the Valley and the community, um, entrepreneurs, small businesses, uh, very, very much involved with services and, and providing amazing free tools for the Valley and entrepreneurial community. We'd like to give a special thanks to our sponsors. So we'd like to first thank the US SBA, Wells Fargo, the San Fernando Valley Business Journal for all of their support for today and continued support through the years. Um, I do want to drop an important link here. The Valley Economic Alliance, as I mentioned to you, does provide amazing complementary tools for entrepreneurs and and just people in the in the um, professional community. This is a, a link here, the valley.net slash assistance. I highly encourage you all to enroll. Here you can get some amazing services from experts, uh, subject matter experts in all different kinds of categories like finance, marketing, um, and it is free. So definitely encourage you to check out that link that I've put into the chat there today. I also want to mention that after this presentation today, there will be slides and a recording available to you all at the thevalley.net slash events. So be sure to also look at those. Uh, I'll do a quick introdu uh, introduction into myself. My name is Talene, and I am the, C the COO and co-founder of a company called Tink. We are a software company focused on small businesses. We provide tools to help you automate and create efficiencies for employee operations and office administration. I will go ahead and drop a link for you in the chat. Feel free to also contact me. I'll put my contact information there. If you need any help with your small businesses when it comes to employee operations, office administration, th things like um, timesheets, project management, invoicing, and so forth. So, so happy again to have you all today. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Angelo Masters with Jacker Digital. He is a growth specialist and focuses on um, taking projects from concept campaign to market. He is a marketing expert and he has proven success improving organic search rankings through detailed web design, content marketing, and brand specific copywriting. We are so happy to have you here, Angelo, and I'd love to give you an opportunity to also introduce yourself in your own words. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's nice meeting everyone here. Uh, that was a great overview of what I do. I have a marketing agency called Jacker Digital. At Jacker Digital, we work one-on-one uh, -on -one with entrepreneurs to help them grow their businesses, depending on what they need. The main services would be creating lead funnels, which usually means creating websites or landing pages. But we also specialize in advertising on Google, which means display, search, YouTube, even and on social media. But more importantly, we don't just work with one channel. We try to figure out how to make those channels work together. So how can we get your Instagram to get you more email followers, to get you more sales? And how can we build funnels that work together? So that's kind of what Jacker Digital does. Me individually, I've been working in marketing uh, for several years. I used to work in uh, apartment marketing downtown Los Angeles. And then before, after that, I worked with a toy company doing e-commerce marketing. I did some contracts with Stranger Things. We did some contracts with Disney. I worked on some toys for Harry Potter. Uh, we made over a million dollars a quarter selling toys. Uh, and I was the head of that e-commerce marketing on top of running Jacker Digital on the side. So I have a wide range of different kinds of clientele because I'm not industry specific. I'm more specific to digital marketing. 
And so today we're going to talk about how we can use some digital marketing to help you get more results, whether that be, you know, brand awareness or clicks or anything you're looking for, which is probably going to be sales and revenue this holiday season, which starts with usually Black Friday, Cyber Monday. But if you were on a few minutes ago, you heard me say that Halloween is probably a great time to start doing some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Before we get started with the presentation, if you weren't here earlier, I do ask that if you can just drop what your business is about or what industry you work in inside of the chat. That way, as I'm going through the presentation, I can you know, probably reference some of the things you guys do or maybe use some of specific examples inside of the presentation. The presentation will be broken up into three to four different sections. You'll see them very clearly once I start the presentation. And if you have any questions about any of the sections, uh, go ahead and drop them in the chat. And I'll take a couple of breaks here and there in order to um, answer the question specific about what we just talked about. And then anything that has to do with the overall concept that we're talking about or something that might be off topic, we'll have time at the end to discuss that. So feel free to just use the chat at your leisure. I'm never gonna be upset about that. And I will get to everyone's questions if it's not Immediately, it might be in a couple of minutes. Sorry, let me get my share screen to be the correct one. I don't need everyone to see my screen that has like 5 million tabs open. <clears throat> take a look, um, take one second to look at the chat and see if there's what you guys do. Okay. Oh, Fatima, you know, I actually, when I I um have a degree in marketing from Pepperdine and in my final project, I actually used a tour guide service as um, <laughs> my final project. So I might be able to help you out with that. Property management. I did property management for eight years. So <laughs> I know all about that as well. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about your brand, whatever that is, property management, software development, uh, commercial real estate, all of that plus Black Friday and beyond. So not just Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, Small Business Tuesday, 12 Days of Christmas, flash sales, anything that's gonna be within that will fit what we're talking about today. We should probably go on a big mode. So a little bit about digital marketing before we get started. Uh, today, brands rely on a host of digital channels to deliver individual messages and experience to a target group of individuals. A lot of buzzwords in there, but that is the bulk of digital marketing. For e-commerce brands and even non-e-commerce brands, this means creating digital funnels that attract new customers and move them through the conversion funnel from brand awareness, where they first find out about your brand, to conversion, where they buy something. That is the bulk of digital marketing. And digital channels can be things like email, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. It could be your uh, landing pages. It could be your eBooks. It could be your YouTube channel, your TikTok. Those are all digital channels where you're delivering messages to people that could then put them on a path to buy something from your brand. When it comes to Black Friday marketing specifically, and we'll talk about Black Friday and beyond. A couple of things to remember is that many brands start their Black Friday, Cyber Monday marketing too late. A lot of brands wait until it's time to start the marketing in November or right before Black Friday. They're like, oh, what sale should I run next week? That's too late to be thinking about what you're gonna be doing. There's a lot of things that need to happen beforehand. Brands should have different campaigns starting throughout Q4 to ensure that they are targeting different customers in different stages. Although the customer journey may be a lot shorter in the fourth quarter, it's still, you still need to go from brand awareness to conversion. You can't just jump to conversion. So don't only have conversion-based uh, campaigns running during November, December. Make sure you're still trying to target new people who've never heard about your brand. And as we go through the presentation, we'll talk about some of those things. This is the most important thing if you remember anything today that launching your holiday campaigns too late can result in poor results. And I'm gonna let you guys know, by being here today in the beginning of October, 
doing a workshop about Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Christmas, you guys are already on the right path because you're already thinking about how you're going to take advantage of the end of the year. So these are my three main pillars that I say to focus on in order to really win this Black Friday Cyber Monday. The first one would be focusing on your budget. The second one would be adjusting your retargeting. And the third one would be taking advantage of email automation. I'm going to throw a fourth one in there if you guys read the notes for the presentation. We'll also talk today about using AI and how AI can help you with all three of these. Jumping into the first one would be controlling your budget. Customer behavior and shopping patterns are very different in Q4, and your budget strategy should align with that. If your customers are behaving differently, then your brand should be behaving differently. That's throughout the whole year. But in Q4, customers behave very differently. People shop brands they never shopped before. People are willing to take more risks. People are mostly buying for gifts. People are spending more money than they usually spend. All of those things can affect how you do your marketing and how you spend money and how you run your sales. If people are spending more money on gifts and you have an item that is mostly a gift or maybe a gift receipt, they may be making that more prevalent than things that people buy for themselves. If people are willing to try new brands, then maybe you should be putting yourself in front of brand new customers as well. Never be afraid to try new things in this quarter because your audience is trying new things in this quarter. They're breaking every single one of their shopping patterns in Q4. And so when it comes down to the conversion funnel, we talked about this a little bit. The conversion funnel, if you're not familiar with it, it goes from awareness when people are first just learning about your brand to interest where they realize, hey, your brand may be able to fix a problem that I have. To consideration, do I want to use your brand to fix the problem that I have? And then into conversion, which is when they say, yes, I would like to buy this product from your brand. So that is the conversion funnel simplified. And when it comes down to pre-Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I would say September and now October, what I say is focus 70% of your budget at the top of your funnel. Finding new people, getting them interested, using consideration tactics that could be you know, using emails, using discount codes, you know, telling them about your brand, having a very robust about page, using a video sales letter, anything that you can do to let people know that you are there and that they should be using your brand. That should be where most of your money is going because that's the hardest part of the conversion funnel. And then you should be using 30% of your budget for conversion. These are things like uh, search ads and maybe even direct sales ads on Instagram and maybe some of your email marketing that is very much just purchase uh, based. This is going to be a great way to focus your budget going from October into November because it will let you get a big pool of people in the awareness, consideration, and conversion, uh, awareness, interest, and consideration. You'll have most of your people in these funnels. And then when the year, sorry, when we get into the holiday season, we can switch that budget to be 30% of this and 70% conversion. Since we're in the holiday season now and people are more focused on conversion, they're more focused on shopping brands than finding new brands. They're more focused on buying gifts than they are and figuring out if your brand can fix their unique problem, then you should spend your budget on that. And if you pre-holiday season spent 70% of your budget up here, then you'll have a lot of people who are willing to move down the funnel and then that's when you can capitalize on them with your conversion tactics. If you guys have any questions about this, please drop them in the chat or uh, drop them in the chat in a few minutes. <laughs> but this is gonna be a great way to structure your budget. If your budget is $100, if your budget is $50, if your budget is $5,000, no matter what it is, make sure that you structure your budget this way and that you're spending most of your money in November and December on conversions. And there's a lot of tactics for that. Again, using advertising, using direct sales emails, using email sequences, uh, using SMS text, 
all of those things are going to be things that really push people to conversion. Even using your higher tier discounts, do not use them in October and September. Wait until this time of the year to really push those high, uh, high value discounts and maybe bundles and giveaways and all of those things that get people to really hit the checkout button. You want to focus on that during holiday season. But in October, don't really focus on that. Focus on how can we find new people? How can we let more people know what we do? You know, how we can fix their problems? How can we get them to become, you know, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our newsletter, to, you know, uh, follow us on other social media channels. All of those things are what you want to focus on right now. And then when we get in November, switch it. And don't just abandon those things. Just do them a lot less. Still focus on how to find new people. Still focus on how can we show them that we're going to fix their problems. How can we get them to follow us, subscribe, and get into our funnels. But really, we want to be hitting them the hardest with the conversion uh, tactics in November and December. I see a question. Oh, sorry. It's just saying if you have a question. So I'm going to move to the next section. If you guys have any questions about the budget, just drop them in there. We'll get to them at the end. The next one's going to be a little bit more tactical, and it's about extending your reach. So use your sales to attract people who have not interacted with your brand in a while. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier when I said that your customers are behaving oddly <laughs> during this time. And so you might need to do that. You may need to do that again. When it comes time to retarget and do things like that, usually um, for retargeting on Facebook, on Google, even on YouTube. What I mean by retargeting is remarketing to people who have already interacted with your brand. So maybe when people go to your website, they start getting ads for your website on Instagram. Maybe when someone watches your YouTube video, now they get a display ad. Maybe when someone opens your email, then they get a text. You know, all of those things are retargeting the people who already engage with your brand. Normally, I would say your retargeting window should be about 30 days for new customers. So if someone didn't, has never bought anything for your brand before, and they go to your website, for the next 30 days, you should be retargeting them on at least Instagram and maybe even on Google. If someone is a returning customer for your brand, after their purchase, you should probably be retargeting them for 90 days or whatever the repeat purchase window is for your brand. There's someone who's in here in commercial real estate. People may not buy something every 90 days. So maybe that's not a good re retargeting window for you. Maybe every six months is a good time to retarget them. If you are in other industries, maybe people buy shampoo every 45 days. It's 45 day cycle. So maybe it would be a 45 day thing. But return customers, I would say keep them in about a 90-day window because that's about how often it would take before someone buys something again. And you want to make sure that your customers become brand loyal. They always know about you. You're always top of mind. Um, so I would say a 90-day uh, customer for retargeting. Now, when it comes to holiday time, Black Friday, any of these holidays, I would say that even if people have never bought from you before again, you should be retargeting at least six months in, uh, in the past. And you can see that's a lot longer than the 30-day window I suggested earlier. And I say six months because a lot of people look at brands and then they say, like, I can't buy that or this might be a good gift, and they just forget about it. But during holiday time, people are willing to buy things from brands they, they looked at months ago. Oh my God, totally forgot about that brand. I would love to buy something. Oh, that might be a good gift for my mom. That might be a good gift for my sister. You never know. So I would say anyone who visited your website in the last six months, you know, then you need to be retargeting them. Anybody who has followed you or interacted with your Instagram in the last six months, and that's the filter that you can set on Instagram at advertising. You need to be retargeting them for brand new customers. And when it comes time for returning customers, anyone who's bought something in your brand, I would say go back nine to 12 months because they might be willing to buy something again now that you have a sale, or they might be willing to say, oh, you know what? I did buy that time that thing for me one time, but I would love to buy that for someone else now. And so people, again, are willing to reach back a lot further than they would normally to 
you know, buy from brands, to participate in brand sales and things like that during the holiday time. So again, if you are looking for new customers during the holiday time, I would look back as far as six months, anyone who interacted with your brand, whether that be, again, going to your website, clicking on any of your advertisements, watching your YouTube videos, watching your content on social media, um, following you, commenting, anybody who did any of those things and also has not made a purchase, you wanna be going back at least six months. I would not suggest this during not holiday time because it would be way too expensive. But during holiday time, this is a great way to find people who will be willing to make a purchase. And when it comes time to retargeting people who have already bought something, look back anyone who bought anything this whole year. Then you want to make sure that you retarget them. And even so, you might find people who shopped your holiday, your uh, who shopped your brand last holiday, and maybe they are only holiday shoppers. And you want to make sure you get them and let them know about your updated sales and maybe new items this year as well. Thank you, uh, Daryl. I see you in there as well. Um, so my next one, we're going to talk about emails. And this is one of my favorite sayings, set it and forget it. And I really like email automation because you can set your sales emails up weeks in advance. You can set them up literally right now. And they can start running in Black Friday or on Christmas and you could be done. That way, when it comes time to being actually Black Friday and all these times, if you have an increased number of sales, you're not worried about sending emails out and responding to emails and actually sending products out and managing your staff or any of that other stuff. The emails are already taken care of, which can take a lot of time and energy and admin efforts, and you can just be done. So remember, it's almost never too early to set up your email automations. Um, and then you can always change them or tweak them later on. I'm going to go over a couple of my uh, standard email automations you guys can set up. If you have any questions about how to set up email automations or what systems I use or anything like that, feel free to message me. Uh, we can talk about it after the I finish or you can email me and I'll always share with you how to set these things up. So when it comes time to a welcome series, this is a series that people usually get after they sign up from a pop-up, a subscription form, whenever they first join your newsletter or anything like that. This is gonna be a good way to warm them up to figure out if they're going to get qualified lead and if they want to buy something. A lot of times when people have pop-ups, they only send the discount. They say, thank you for subscribing. Here's your discount. But that's usually not enough. People probably don't know enough about your brand. And if they don't use the discount within the first day, that email usually gets deleted. So a better thing to do would be right after they they uh, subscribe. You instantly want to send them a welcome email. In this email, I like to talk about your brand. What is it that you do? Say thank you for subscribing. Here's a little bit about us. Not too much. Just basically let them know that they're going to be receiving emails from you. Then I always wait one day and then I send brand information. This is no offer. It doesn't say buy anything. It doesn't say anything. Depending on what your 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 job is, this could be anything. If you're commercial real estate, maybe this is all of our listings we have right now or our process for obtaining new customers or how we put you in the best area. If you are working tech, it could say about our technology. Here's the, the latest software we use and how we use our software to build our business. Uh, it could be about uh, some of the people that you recently placed in jobs. Um, if you're looking to be a recruitment specialist, here's some here's some of our success stories. Anything that can let someone know more about you, assuming that they haven't read your about page and they haven't really gone through your website. So this is going to be something that will make them feel more comfortable with your brand. And by not really putting an offer in here, you let them know you're not really here just to make sales from you. You're here to welcome them into your community and make sure that they feel knowledgeable moving forward. So I would do that one day. Then I would wait two days and I would put a filter on this, a conditional filter and on if they made a purchase this day or this day. If they did make a purchase, then you might have an opportunity to upsell them something here that maybe go along with what they bought. 
hey, I see you bought this. Do you want an extended warranty? Hey, I see you bought this. Do you want a consultation package with that? Hey, you bought this shirt. These pants go great with that. This would be a great time because you've already qualified to know that they're going to be buying something and you let them know, hey, something else goes with that. You can make more money there. If they haven't purchased anything this day, this day, or within the last week or so, then you can hit them on an offer. Hey, buy this, shop this, do this, book transportation, buy my book, anything like that. This will be a great day to offer them something because by now, if they've read this email and they read this email, they're probably in the perfect place to get this offer. And again, if you set this email up, this is four different emails you have to, you have to make. You can make them, it might take you an hour or two, and you can make them today. And then this could run for the rest of the year. I have a couple more I'll show you. Oh, this one's a little weird. Let's just go all the way through. So this one is, um, sorry, my screen's a little weird. This one is for getting automated reviews. Automated reviews are something that can make or break your business. You can use reviews on your website. You can use them in that welcome email I told you to do. They go on Google, they go on Yelp. They really help people during the holiday season know if they wanna buy something, if they are brand new to your business. So even during the holiday time, you wanna be making sure that you're getting reviews on all of those brand new purchases you just got because it'd be a good time to carry you through the rest of the holiday season and the rest of the year. And so what I want you to do is once a customer make a purchase, instantly hit them with a thank you email. Thank you. This is what you bought. This is, this, we love it. All, anything you could do. Most email systems have an automated thank you email that goes out after a customer purchases. Just make sure you look at it to make sure that it's branded correctly and that it has the best information in it. Then wait one day and send them the tracking information. This email sometimes also goes out automatically depending on your system. Sometimes if you use Shopify, if you ship it, it will send this email out automatically. So you might not have to set this one up, but if you use a email system that does not do it automatically, make sure you send your customers your tracking information. This could help you cut down on negative reviews because they'll know the whole time where their things are. And if they see that USPS is late or Amazon is late, then they won't be mad at you. But if you don't send tracking information and then your, your package is late or delayed, that will always be your fault and you will get a negative review for that. So this is a very important information to send because it will help you cut down on a negative uh, reputation and might help you focus your customer's attention on who actually is handling their package. Because once it leaves your facility, it's not your, it's not your responsibility anymore. The most important part is to wait seven to 10 days and then hit them with a review request. Seven to 10 days, make sure that they got whatever it was that you sent them and that they used it. <laughs> a lot of people send uh, re review requests the day that someone gets the package. They might not even opened it yet. They might not have used it yet. They might not have known if it works yet and then and they won't be able to review it. But by waiting seven to 10 days, you know that the package arrived to them, they got it and they probably used it. This is a great time to send them a review request. And I would direct them to a couple of different places. Maybe try sending them to Google sometimes, sending them to Yelp sometimes and seeing which one gets you more reviews and which ones are better and which ones could you use a little bit more. I have another one. This one is a giveaway series. A lot of people are be going, going to be running giveaways and they're going to be running um, a lot of gamify type things for getting more email addresses, for getting people to shop their sales and things like that. And so um, immediately after someone enters your email, uh, your giveaway, you want to say thank you for entering. And this one can also include a lot of brand information about whatever you're giving away in the, the, the giveaway or the specific products. Then I want you to send no emails at all until the giveaway is over. And then when the giveaway is over, you announce the winners, super easy peasy. And then you wait one day. This is the filter that I want you to put on. If they open this email, if they open this email where the winners was announced, that means they're highly invested in what's going on in your brand. 
If they didn't open it, that means they probably entered the giveaway and forgot about it. They never planned on shopping your brand. They only wanted something for free. So if they opened your winner's announced email, then I want you to send them a discount offer on the giveaway items. So if you were running, let's say you could win a free consultation, you could win this, you could win that, anything that you could win, you want to say three people won, but a thousand people entered. Well, that leaves you with over 900 people who are still interested in that product and are maybe willing to buy it since they didn't win it. So this will be a great time to send this discount offer to the people, but you're not sending a discount to everyone who entered, only people who are interested. That's why people who didn't open it, they do not get a discount. And that's how you can control your sale a little bit by not offering your sale to every single person on the internet. Only people who have qualified themselves by entering, opening an email, opening another email, and then now, bam, they didn't win, but we feel so sorry. We wanted to make sure that everyone who entered had a chance to buy this product, and we're going to give it to you at a discount. This is a great way to run a sale during a holiday that doesn't necessarily feel like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, 12 days of Christmas, and your people might not even know a flash sale might be coming to them, which could really help you capitalize on that sense of urgency. I got one more for you guys. In this, and I see some questions, we're gonna get to them. This is gonna be um, everyone's favorite. This is an automated sales series. A lot of people are gonna be running a lot of sales during the holiday time. And that means a lot of emailing, a lot of managing, um, open rates and things like that. This might help you cut down on some of that. So three days before your sale starts, I want you to send a sales teaser. And this is gonna be kind of like that old school Toys R Us book that says everything that's gonna be on sale this, this, uh, this sale. What the discount is, what to expect, maybe even if you think that you're gonna run out or anything like that. Um, send it and let people know exactly what it is. A lot of people like to run surprise sales and they don't want people to know what the discount's gonna be. Well, then people can't prepare if they don't know what they're gonna be buying. But if you give them three days, they might be interested in, in saying like, oh, in three days, I'm gonna get that. Then when the holiday sales is ready, launch, I wanna put another open filter on it. If people have opened your sales teaser, that means that they are ready to be buying something. Um, if they didn't open it, we're not sending them anything. If they opened it, we wanna send them all the deals that we talked about in the sales teaser. So then that gives an opportunity in this email to shop. This is a money-making email for you right here. This could be Black Friday day. This can be Cyber Monday day. This can be 12 days of Christmas, a flash sale. Any sale works here, but just make sure that you don't just start off your sale with the deals email. Hey, sales launching right now, shop now. That would be starting here, but you haven't really pre-qualified who wants to be a part of that sale and you haven't really given them a little bit of excitement yet. So then it's not over yet. I want you to wait one day because most of your sales are going to last more than one day. And if they purchase something, we can stop sending them emails. But if they didn't purchase something, send them an email again. You know, they might not have gotten it. They might have forgot. They might be shopping other deals. And people's emails uh, are going to be see a 70% increase this year during Black Friday. That's a lot more emails than they normally get. So your email may have been buried, it may have been spam, anything like that. So don't only just send one email with your deals in it. Send, wait a day, if they open, you can take them out of your purchase funnel. If they didn't open, you can send them the deals again. And you can extend this through your entire sale. If it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and you're running the sale from Friday until Monday, this can be on Wednesday. This can be on Friday, this can be on Saturday, and you can do one more on Sunday if they purchased or not. And if they didn't, take them out of your funnel. If they did, sorry, if they did, take them out of your funnel. If they didn't purchase, then you can keep sending them the deals emails. The way to make these emails not feel like you're spamming the same emails is to change the subject. So our sale just started. Hey, did you see these hot items? Only one day left. We are running out. Those kind of things are all different. Um, subjects so the emails feel different when they come to the customer and then you also want to change a little bit of the things that inside you don't have to change too much maybe just switch the order of things so that way they open the email they realize oh this is a different email or maybe they feel like oh there's new deals in here 
So without doing anything new, you're giving yourself multiple opportunities to make a sale off of the same items. And again, you've already kind of pre-qualified your, your, um, your list. When you send this email out, some people might unsubscribe, some people might not open it. Don't be afraid of those people. They were never going to buy anything anyway. So really, you can see we're just focusing on the people who are our warmest leads. They are already interested in buying things from us. And again, this, this email can be made right now. Even if you don't know what your deals are going to be, you can just put little placeholders there. But you can type out all the copy, design it. You can create all of the uh, subjects and all of the pretext today in October. And then as you figure out what are my deals going to be, you can just go back in and add the pictures and the, the cart links to this email. And then you can be done with your Black Friday sale emails in October. I see a couple of questions, so. Um, so for as far as tools that I use for email automation, I use a couple different um, uh, email marketing systems, depending on what my clients' uh, businesses are. So I would always say, find the best email marketing system that goes with your industry. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, and always try to use native if you can. So what I mean by that is I use Clavio mostly. Clavio is my number one recommendation for email marketing um, software. They can do funneling, they can do SMS, they have pretty good pricing, and they are really good. They have smart systems. Everything about Clavio, I love. But I have a client, she works in hospitality, and Clavio can't tell when people check in or check out. And that's a pretty big time when we need to send emails. So I don't use Clavio for that, even though I feel like Clavio is one of the best. So if you find that you have an email system that doesn't work with what you do, go with what works for what you do. Uh, if you do e-commerce, there's a, there's a newer company called Sendlane that I love. They are really focused on e-commerce. If you don't do e-commerce, a lot of their tools will still work for your business, but it's not the most powerful one. But Sendlane also has a AI system, I'll talk about it a little bit later on today, that I really love as well. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but between Sendlane and Clavio, I really love those. When I say go native, some people here who are like the academic job specialist, commercial real estate, things like that, you might not need something as powerful as this because you might not be running deals. You might not be running that. But if you are a commercial real estate agent, you might have a lead gen that might be like, download this neighborhood guide. And then you might want them to download the neighborhood guide. And then from there, they're on your email list. And then you email them you know, about all your open listings. So if you do something like that, you might not need Clavio or anything like that. Squarespace has a really good native email marketing system where you can, if you have your website on Squarespace, you can email directly from Squarespace. Shopify has a very uh, native email marketing system. If you're on Shopify for e-commerce, you might could just use Shopify's email marketing system. It's less powerful than Clavio, but you may not have enough subscribers yet to need something so big. So if you ever use a Shopify, Wix, uh, Squarespace, those all have native email marketing systems in them that can do what I'm doing right now with automated series. Uh, if you need something more powerful, I would always say go to uh, Clavio or Sendlane, and I would move away from using Constant Contact or MailChimp. A lot of people use those, but they are a little bit more outdated than some of these newer systems who can do things like what we're talking about today. I'll see if there's any more questions. Any tools for specifically for B2B marketing? Uh, Eddie, if you don't mind, I would like to come back to that at the end. We might, we might find some things as we move on that might answer your question. And yes, I will be able to link uh, the things we're talking about today. Oh, I did have one more for you guys. We'll skip this one. It'll be inside of the, um, the deck. You guys can download it. I want to move over to probably one of the most burning um, topics of 2023, which is using AI. 
And uh, before I go on, I want to say that AI has been around forever and we already use it. We use so many AI in all of our technology and all of our systems and everything like that. So when people are saying AI for business, don't always feel like it's new. A lot of people just are using the buzzword to, um, to, to be buzzy, you know? And what I mean by that is like, if you use Netflix or something like that, and it's recommending a TV show to you based off other TV shows, that is AI. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you have a nest in your house and it is auto setting the temperature for you, that is AI as well. You know, Siri has been around forever. So has Alexa, you know, all of these things that we use to get personalized recommendations, who should we follow, you know, things we might like, those are all AI technology that have been around forever. So AI is not really taking over. It's always been here. I think that more people are getting used to what AI is. And so it's seeming like it's taking over. But even email automation is AI. And so don't be afraid of the buzzwords. Don't feel like you're being left behind. I guarantee you, no matter what your business is, you are already using AI. But there might just be some newer tools that can be out there for you. And so with the new advances in marketing technology, it can now help you save a little bit more time and maybe even some money this season. Um, so a couple of the ones that I really love, there's so many out there. The first one will be Send Lane. I talked about this a little bit, but the AI tool that I love here for this email system is that it has a tool that will send emails to your customers when they're most likely to open. And so that is something that is brilliant because trying to optimize a send time for a list that is like 10,000 is hard because they all have different times for opening their list. So you're trying to just get to the medium. But what SendLane does is take each person individually and say, what time are they most likely to open emails based off of the emails we sent them in the past and send them that email at that time. So even though I might send my email blast out at noon, if it knows that Erica is most likely to open her emails at five, it will hold Erica's email and send it to her at five o'clock p.m. That is brilliant. And they have seen about a 70% increase on open rates. That's what they told me uh, based off of this AI system. A lot of other people don't have it. It's proprietary to SendLane right now, but I do think that people like Clavio and maybe even MailChimp are gonna be looking at how can we get that kind of system into our email platform because that is invaluable. Uh, SimRush is an SEO tool. Uh, it can help you monitor your SEO efforts and plan keywords. This is going to be great for B2B or B2C because if you're B2B, you're probably looking for more leads and you're looking for more higher value customers and you're looking for more uh, maybe uh, people to be finding you through keywords like um, what commercial real estate is available in Santa Monica, you know, or how can I land a job or how can I do that? Those are people who are you going to be really targeting on. And so SimRush has a lot of tools that can help you find keywords that are going to be what those people are searching for. It can tell you the search value of those keywords. It also can help you plan backlinks where you can be featured on other people's websites that might relate to you. And it can help you do all of those things, uh, look at those things for your competitors. So you can see where are my competitors showing up online? Where are my competitors doing brand partnerships at? Who, uh, what are their top landing pages? What are their top keywords? And you can see what your audience is reacting to. And that's not specific to any industry. So I recommend SimRush for a lot of people. They have a free version, but they also, uh, for most of the features, you would need a paid version, which is kind of expensive. It's $90 a month. Um, so if you work with an agency similar to mine or another agency, if it's uh, niche, if they have SEO software, they'll be able to help you out with this. If not, the free version of SEMrush and AH AHREFS, they are both amazing for you to use to get a, a quick snapshot of uh, keywords and things like that. Copy AI, I would also say Jarvis, they're equal. Um, so Copy AI can help you write anything. It can help you write captions. It can help you write email campaigns. It can help you write your landing pages. It can help you do all kinds of things. And so Copy AI this year can really help you out during the holiday time because you're probably going to have to write a lot more content than you normally write. And if you're a small team, that can really take over a lot of your time going from 
writing, you know, one email caption to 10 or writing one Facebook post to 30, you know, during holiday season. So Copy AI is great for cutting down time. It really can also do if you want to be friendly, aggressive, you want to talk like you're an old person, a young person. It has a lot of things in there. Uh, it, they have a free version. They also have a paid version. But on the free version, you should be able to do most of what you need to do this holiday season. And the last one, a lot of people already know about this one. It's ChatGPT. Uh, and it's a really, it could do almost everything that we've talked about, except for what Sinlane does. But really what I want to use ChatGPT for this holiday season is just a, mostly strategy. So you can say, hey, I'm thinking about running a Black Friday sale. Here are my products. Here are my sales numbers. What do you think I should be doing? And it might give you a good outline. You can say, you know, hey, I want to run a sales series. Maybe my series of emails don't necessarily fit your brand. So you can say, hey, I am a job analyst. How can I build an email series that will help me get more customers? And it might help you figure out something like that. And that might help you cut down on time of dealing with someone like me <laughs> or, um, you know, spending time with your team or it can help you just really cut down on a lot of those things, even asking it budgeting questions or, you know, using it for brainstorming during the holiday season can really help you out. But if also you need it, copy, it can help you out with that as well. And it can maybe help you out with keywords. The one thing to remember is that ChatGPT does not have any data past, like, I think the end of 2021. So if you're asking it for specifics, like what are the most high powered keywords, it might be not pulling some of the new information. If you're asking it for specifics about 2022 or 2023, it won't have it, but it will not tell you it won't have it. It will just make it up. <laughs> so just be aware of that uh, during those times. We're almost out of here. I do have time for more questions, but I do want to let you guys know before we get out of here, a couple of shopping trends that were from 2021 and 2022 that may hold over this Black Friday. So the first one was that the average savings for Black Friday, Cyber Monday were about 24%. I really like to highlight that because a lot of people feel like they really need to give away the whole farm on Black Friday and do 50% sales and 75% sales and all of these things. Black Friday has really decreased a lot during the years. And if you are running no sales at all, or you're running a small sale or 20%, just know that you will still be in line with a lot of the other competitors and most industries. The next thing is that about 43% of Black Friday sales happen through mobile phones. This should not be surprising. Um, so make sure that all of your sales pages and all of your sales emails are mobile friendly. But on the reverse of that, more than 50% of those things are still done on desktop, tablets, and things like that. So make sure that you do pay attention to those things as well. I do see a lot of overly mobile-friendly web designs nowadays. And in the desktop version, it's not optimized at all. But still realize that a lot of people are shopping on mobile phones. So that's going to be very, very important. But a lot of people are shopping on tablet and a lot of people are shopping on desktop as well. So still make sure that those two platforms are optimized and easy for people to shop as well. No surprise here, millennials were the biggest shoppers in 2021 and also 2022. Uh, Black Friday didn't exist a long time ago, and Black Friday is not really targeted to Gen Z. They like to shop deals year-round, and a lot of fast fashion is always cheap, and uh, a lot of them are not to the age yet where they are doing a lot of big B2B purchases. And so millennials are the, the, the go-to people for Black Friday. And so if you are doing a lot of age targeting on advertising, then you might want to set your filters to be a little tighter. It doesn't mean that Gen Z will not shop your sales or boomers or people older than that will not shop your sales. But if you're going to spend your money, spend it wisely and just focus your advertising on maybe two or three years plus or minus the millennial people, unless, 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 unless your, your business is targeted to a specific generation. If you sell clothes for older women, don't target millennials. You know, if you sell, you know, supplements, something like that, target your thing. But if you have millennials within your customer persona, 
Black Friday might be a time to really focus on them because they're gonna be the most conditioned to shop during this time. And that is all I have. I do have time for some more questions from you guys. I can stick around a little bit past 11 if you guys need me to, but I really want you guys to go out there and take advantage of all of the things we talked about today. Some of them may not fit you specifically, some of them may, um, and just really try to do your best to win this holiday season. You know, not only Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but also 12 days of Christmas, any flash sales you're having, and even your after Christmas sale. This all could be useful to you. Lastly, I do have a special offer for you guys. I have consultations. We can go over any of these things that you guys, we talked about today. The first one's free. So always hit me up. The first one's free. If you want, I do offer a 10 package that can take you through the whole rest of the year. It's normally 350. I can offer it to you for 280, but I also can offer you guys for being part of the Valley Economic Fund, 20% off any service you guys want. I don't know what you guys need. Hit me up, but I'll be willing to offer you guys this discount to help you guys out the rest of the summer, sorry, the rest of the year. And if there's any more questions, then I'm happy to take them right now. I think I see one in the chat right now. Nope, just a replay slide. So if there's any questions, let me know. And uh, I did want to get my newsletter over to you guys. I have a newsletter um, where I talked about actually a lot of my pre-holiday marketing tips. I sent it out yesterday. And so I'm gonna drop it in the chat. Some of the things we talked about today are in there and some of the things, uh, some there's some other new things in there as well. Um, and then if you would like to subscribe to my newsletter, I'll also drop that in the chat as well. Thank you so much, Angelo. Oh my goodness. So much information. This was a fantastic presentation. I think for all industries you gave so much inform great information regarding um, automated email series, different tools that they can use. I know for one, I, I especially appreciated the series, um, the automated email series and the different types that you use. Um, and I think it was especially important kind of calling out uh, the time periods as to when you're sending out emails and not spamming your customers or prospects. Yes. So I think it's very important. So. Thank you so much. So much great, valuable information. Um, I did want to just bring your attention to the chat. As Angela said, he did link his latest newsletter there with fantastic um, information like he shared today, but some additional value there as well. You can also subscribe to his newsletter with his sign up link. I'm going to also put in some a few more links here and call out a few more great things happening. Um, the next link that I'll be putting in is the valley.net slash events. There you can see the replay of this webinar as well as the slides, the full deck presentation. Um, and you will also see that we will be having another event for the Valley Growth Lab on Wednesday, October 11th from four to six. So if you follow that link, the valley.net slash events, you can register there. Um, also want to bring your attention to the valley.net slash assistance. There so you yeah, I did that also... wrong. I'm sorry, oh. I did gave you the wrong link. So it's um, okay. business and then assistance. So I just put that in my fault. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that you you caught that because. It is a phenomenal program for business owners and professionals in the community. So I highly, highly recommend that you do follow that link and sign up for the business assistance program. As I mentioned earlier on the webinar, there are great resources for you in all types of categories where we will align you with subject matter experts in categories like finance, marketing, like Angelo, um, all types of tools and resources. So please follow that link and it is completely free to register. I want to thank you all again for joining us today. And thank you so much, Angelo Masters. Um, and thank you to the Valley Economic Alliance for continuing to support the community. Um, hope you all have a wonderful, fantastic day. And best of luck with all of your holiday marketing strategies. Now you have so much to use. So thank you all. Take care. And before we go, I do want to say before you leave, 
if anyone doesn't know, you can save the chat in case there's a lot of links in there for you guys. The, at the bottom oh. of the chat, there's the three buttons down there. You can press that, you can press save, and it'll save a, a text file of the chat to your computer. That way you can go back and get all of these links later in case you didn't get them. Good call. Thank you, thank you. Of course, all I'll right. see you guys again and have a great rest of your day. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.